These guys always go for the landmarks, don't they? Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the fifth film in Legendary's MonsterVerse franchise, 2024's kaiju action sequel, Godzilla Kong The New Empire. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Godzilla Kong The New Empire stars Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, and Kaylee Hoddle, and was directed by Adam Wingard. Set three years after Godzilla vs. Kong, it tells the story of Kong and Godzilla joining forces to protect the world from a new Hollow Earth threat. It's no secret that Legendary's MonsterVerse franchise had always been building toward the gargantuan crossover of Godzilla vs. Kong. So after the release of that film, the future of the franchise was in question. Due in part to licensing expirations, there had been talk that Godzilla vs. Kong would be the last of this particular franchise, but it ended up being way too successful for that. People needed more kaiju mayhem and destruction, so plans for a sequel were announced, and here we are a few short years later with our 38th Godzilla film. This movie was put in an interesting position, coming on the heels of last year's excellent Godzilla Minus One. It's important to note just how different these two movies are, to the point that they're barely even comparable. But that's okay, and it's actually one of the unique things about the broader Godzilla franchise. Godzilla has always existed on a sliding spectrum. There are serious Godzilla movies with deep thematic undercurrents, but there are also plenty of exceptionally goofy monster beat-em-up Godzilla movies, featuring robots, aliens, undersea people, and all sorts of weird antagonists. These different sides of the Godzilla franchise have existed in harmony for more than six decades now, and we see that on display very clearly with Godzilla Minus One taking the serious and thematically dense route, and Godzilla Kong The New Empire taking the over-the-top blockbuster monster mash route. Godzilla Kong The New Empire is an unabashedly silly film. It knows exactly where it stands on this Godzilla spectrum and plays up the absurdity even more than Godzilla vs. Kong did with its establishment of Hollow Earth, the inclusion of Mechagodzilla, and the general Titan smash fest. This sequel leans even farther into the sci-fi fantasy of it all and extracts as much of the goofiness, cheesiness, and over-the-top ridiculousness as it possibly can. It's chock full of moments that'll make you, perhaps derisively, chuckle at the absurdity of what you're watching. Kong home alone Hollow Earth, Godzilla treating the Colosseum like an oversized cat bed, Titan dentistry, and it gets all the more silly once the fighting starts, with Kong using all sorts of unique weapons, including other monkeys. At times, the big fight sequences feel like something out of a Marvel movie, with the titanic combatants leaping through the air at each other in slow motion, teeth and fists spared. It's all monumentally stupid, but undeniably entertaining in its silliness, delivering more than its share of nonsensical kaiju fun. Speaking of kaiju, these monstrous creatures are mostly at the forefront this time around. We still get some human stuff, of course, primarily revolving around the Team Kong crew from the previous film plus Bernie, but it is a reduced human cast, and there is a comparatively reduced human focus to this film. The humans are basically just there to occasionally deliver streams of exposition and set up for the kaiju mayhem. So the franchise's human issue isn't solved here, but this film features long stretches of time and whole subplots that are completely human-free. To an even larger extent than in Godzilla vs. Kong, this film feels like a Kong movie. Godzilla is still there and does a few cool and plot important things, but he really doesn't have much screen time and instead feels a bit like a side character, spending a good deal of runtime sleeping or charging. Kong is the one who gets an actual storyline here, and the movie explores his sympathetic, protective side a bit more, expanding upon the previous film's characterization of him. Beyond the two titular titans, we do get a handful of briefly featured new titans, the return of an old, powerful friend, and lots of monkeys, including the very silly but enjoyable mini Kong, Suko. Godzilla Kong The New Empire is a very mixed bag, or maybe a mixed barrel of monkeys in this case. It's a superficially fun blockbuster, but is about as hollow as the film's version of the Earth. And that's fine. Like I said, there's a Godzilla spectrum, and it's fine to have some silly popcorn blockbuster entries. 
This one's got a convoluted story and relies on information and characters from the previous MonsterVerse movies, so it could be a tad overwhelming or confusing to follow for newcomers and casual fans, but there's no doubt that it delivers on big, over-the-top kaiju ridiculousness. And sometimes that's all you need to ask of a film like this. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. The biggest pro is the Titan focus. I guess I should probably say the comparative Titan focus. There's still a tad too much inane human stuff going on towards the beginning, but the humans quickly devolve into little more than expository mouthpieces, explaining Hollow Earth lore and setting up for the kaiju action. Compared to the other MonsterVerse films, the size of the human cast is reduced, and there are big stretches of the film that are completely human-free, mostly revolving around Kong and his dealings with the Scar King. It's far from perfect, but definitely a titan-sized step in the right direction. Pro number two is Kong and Suko, aka Mini Kong. If you couldn't tell, I've always been Team Kong, so the Kong centricity of this film was more than okay with me. He's a fun character, imbued with real personality, so there's plenty for Kong fans to enjoy here. The introduction of his protege is also an amusing addition to the story. It's all so dumb, but it's entertaining to see Mini Kong do just about anything. Apparently his name is Suko, and I don't remember that being mentioned in the film, but there's a chance I just missed it buried within the petroglyph exposition dump. Regardless, Mini Kong brought a smile to my face every time he was on screen. On the con side, the biggest issue is the script. The MonsterVerse is certainly no stranger to this issue, but it does seem like the writing was knocked down a step here, even when compared to Godzilla vs. Kong. The dialogue was underwhelming, with most of it comprised of exposition or forced jokes, but the biggest issue is just how convoluted the story is. There's certainly some entertainment to be gleaned from some of the ridiculous plot points and scenarios, but this is an overly complex Mothra web of a story just to get a few giant animals to fight each other. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Godzilla Kong The New Empire or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy in one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm going to give Godzilla Kong The New Empire three out of five paws. The convoluted story and rough script make things a little tedious at times, but the increased titan focus, plethora of monkeys, and unabashedly silly titan fights make this mid-tier Godzilla movie an enjoyably absurd time. I would recommend Godzilla Kong The New Empire to fans of Godzilla vs. Kong, or really just anybody looking for some silly kaiju chaos. This is a ridiculous popcorn movie that gives us some giant monsters fighting and little else, but sometimes that's all you need from a movie like this. Kong fans will appreciate seeing their favorite giant monkey, but Godzilla fans may be less enthused about their radioactive lizard's minimal screen time. It's definitely structured as more of a Kong movie than it is a Godzilla one. If you liked Godzilla Kong The New Empire, I would recommend King Kong Escapes. This is a ridiculous and silly Toho King Kong movie directed by Ishiro Honda, the director of the original Godzilla and many other kaiju films. It's an absurd movie that features some dull human plot lines, but fans of Kong's Project Powerhouse Gauntlet should find some similarly silly metallic Kong shenanigans here. If you liked the ape focus of this film and want another monkey community movie, you might want to check out War for the Planet of the Apes. Many Planet of the Apes films could work as recommendations here, but this one not only features arguably the best CGI of the franchise so far, but is also the one with the most ape infighting. And speaking of fighting, if you just want some more monster vs. kaiju action, you should check out Godzilla vs. Kong. It's another Kong-skewed entry in the franchise, but offers up some visually spectacular and highly entertaining fight sequences between the two titular titans. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Godzilla Kong The New Empire? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, which Toho Kaiju would you like to see make an appearance in the MonsterVerse franchise? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information on this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.